What's up you guys, this is Rob from A Gay Guy Plays and today on The Snapshot we are continuing our Road to Tenocon series by doing a quick glimpse at every single weapon that Barrow Katir has ever brought. Alrighty, so for those of you who don't know, Barrow Katir will be paying a visit during Tenocon weekend and unlocking a very special relay for digital pass holders. Now digital passes cost about 20 bucks Canadian, which is around 15 US dollars. Now in this relay, he is going to be releasing every single weapon and mod and armor set that he's ever created. So there's going to be a world of choice there um, that you'll be able to purchase, which might be a little bit overwhelming for a player that's a little bit newer or maybe just doesn't know what the fuck they want. So I figured I would go ahead and construct a little bit of a buyer's guide for you to um, be able to narrow down the things you would like. Now, a lot of people are going to say, all right, well, what is the most worth it weapon? Which ones should I pick up or not pick up? Um, personally, my general overview of everything is get whatever you possibly can afford. Start with the best and then trickle down from there, mainly because in my heart of hearts, a lot of people have kind of like ran around and say, oh, mastery rank doesn't matter, mastery rank doesn't matter. Now, of course, I would not suggest judging people based on their mastery rank. However, when it boils down to mastery rank, the way that I've always kind of thought about it is mastery rank's not gonna matter until the day that it does. This is almost kind of like my word of warning. One day DE is going to attach something to Mastery Rank that you want. And me personally, I want to be ready for that day, so I'm always trying to make sure that I, you know, max out everything and um, do that. Even before I was a Warframe partner, that's exactly what I did, because you never know. And you don't want to be kind of like on that edge where you're like, Man, if only I had spent all of this time leveling up weapons instead of bitching and moaning about shit that didn't really fucking matter in the first place, I could have that mastery rank and I could have that stuff available to me right now. So in my personal opinion, pick up everything that you can possibly pick up. However, if you don't have the ducats or ducats or the credits to pick up everything, um, I'm going to show you from the top down what is the most effective, I guess, because I, I don't want to say the best because there's really no best in Warframe, but what weapons are the most effective that he currently has in stock. Alright, so a little bit of a disclaimer before we get started. As you guys know, I have a metric ton of weapons that need to be compared, so I'm not going to audially compare this weapon stats to the original version stats. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to load up one weapon and I'm going to have the comparison right off to the side. And I'm always going to compare the weapon to the most viable version of that weapon. I know that sounds kind of strange, but it's going to be like Prisma Krakata versus the Krakata. However, in the Prisma Gorgon's case, it will be the Prisma Gorgon versus the Gorgon. And Wraith. So just know I'm gonna kind of make sure to keep it at that level so you guys know how it compares to the most viable version. Now, of course, we're gonna start out with the Prisma Gokata, and this thing is absolutely insane. It costs 610 ducats or ducats, however you prefer to pronounce it, and 100,000 credits. Um, now, this thing with its supplemental stats and its fire rate is absolutely insane. It can chew through armored targets, and of course, if you tailor it with the right elements, um, you can basically bring it up against any kind of enemy that you want to. It feels really, really nice in your hands. The only thing that I do have to stress is um, make sure you have something like ammo mutation or you have a carrier with um, ammo case on there or maybe just even some ammo pads just because this thing will chew through ammo. Now for standard missions, I don't think that that's really going to be much of an issue. However, in the higher level sorties where things get a little bit bullet spongy, it will kind of burn through ammo fairly quickly. So make sure you have one of those things to offset it. And my other tip for this one is make sure that you are not firing it just like full auto all the time. This thing has such a fast fire rate that you really kind of want to fire it in little bursts. Because the big thing that tends to happen to me is, and I, I don't know, maybe this doesn't happen to you, but it definitely happens to me. I tend to fire at dead bodies. <laughs> This thing can kill things very, very quickly with its fast fire rate and all of the procs that kind of go off that it's very easy to hold down the button for a little too long. And because it has such a fast fire rate, it is very, very easy to waste ammo on something that's already dead. So make sure to keep that in mind when you're using the Prisma Kakata. However, this is definitely my favorite primary that Barrow Katir has set out. So if you haven't already picked it up, definitely pick this one up. Moving along to the Prisma Tetra, this one officially gets a 
pretty good for me. This one is 400 Ducats and 50,000 credits um, from Barrow Katir. And I'm not going to say that this is the best weapon in the world, but I'll be honest with you, I do have a little bit of a soft spot for it. Um, I fell in love with it way back in the day, and I still kind of love it now. It's not, like I said, it's not the best out there. It's got decent supplemental stats. You can toss some point strike and vital sense on it, even though it is only like 10% crit chance, which hurts my soul. But it performs better than the other weapons that we have on this list, at least primary-wise. Um, it does have a cool mod that is attached to it. Well, not attached to it. You have to slot it in yourself, but it is Kinetic Ricochet, which gives the projectiles 30% more travel distance, as well as allows the projectiles to bounce off of walls. Now, quick tip for this one, do not attach that to Shred. Um, it's either going to be Shred or it's going to be Kinetic Ricochet, and that is mainly because of the fact that, of course, Shred has punched through, so basically what ends up happening is you shoot the bullets into the walls and the walls cannot bounce off of the walls if they are inside of the walls. <laughs> um, this one does eat ammo a little bit so I suggest either bring ammo packs or um, having the carrier pack thing with you. Um, it's not, I don't feel like it's as terrible as the Prisma Gricada when it comes to ammo economy and that's mainly because you're not shooting as a fast so you are a little bit more cognizant of how much you're shooting. So I'm going to give this weapon a thumbs up. I definitely think you should check it out. Um, but again, this isn't, I don't really feel like this is a must have. This is one of those things that's nice to have. Alright, so next up is the Prisma Gorgon, and this one is available for 600 Ducats and 50,000 credits. Now, it looks absolutely gorgeous. That's the first thing that I really want to point out. I really love the model of it with the cool little energy whiskers that it has down at the bottom. Um, it's got some nice crit stats, and that's kind of the thing that I do want to note about this weapon, because its status uh, chance is a little bit low. So that means it's going to perform really, really well against the Corpus and the Infested. However, it is definitely going to struggle against the Grenier. Unless, of course, you've got a good team that is prepped with enough corrosive projections to kind of wear away some of that enemy armor without needing the weapon to have status itself. So that's kind of like one of the things that pulls it a little bit lower than the Prisma Tetra for me. Um, however, it could actually pull ahead of the Prisma Tetra if you've got a team that's either a little bit prepared or if you have other means to strip enemy armor. Like think an Abating Link Trinity or something along the lines. Then, in that case, this weapon would actually pull pull ahead and be pretty gosh darn impeccable. Now, on its own, without any of that though, it's not bad. It's it's gonna get a solid not bad for me otherwise. However, um, when you do come up against armor targets, that is really where you're gonna struggle with this one. Regardless, it's still beautiful, so definitely check it out. Now next up we have the Quanta Vandal, which is available for 450 Ducats and 300,000 credits. And to top that off, I'm currently using the Afway skin. <laughs> I'm never gonna know how to pronounce that. The Afway skin is available from Barrow Katir for another 300 Ducats and another 300,000 credits. So what you see here, visually, is a total of 600 hundred thousand credits and it's kind of like not the greatest if I'm gonna be completely honest with you um they got a boost to its status per second and as you guys know status per second is kind of garbage at the moment and I always say at the moment because you never know DE may come in in the future and kind of revamp all of the status per second stuff and it might make it a ton better I don't know but as it stands status per second is a bit underwhelming it does have electric as its base which is fantastic for comboing into corrosive radiation and magnetic but the one thing that I do kind of want to push out to you is while those are all fantastic elements um like things like corrosive corrosive damage does not equal armor stripping corrosive procs equal armor stripping and because of the fact that this doesn't have a very low uh that this doesn't have a very high status chance and I know it seems kind of weird because it's a 25% but status per second is it, it has a completely different mechanic to it and it just does not proc as much as you think it would proc okay so without the corrosive procs itself you're not stripping any of the armor so just because you have corrosive damage on this Keep in mind that corrosive damage does not strip armor, corrosive procs strip armor. So when you go up against alloy targets who, you know, have no inherent benefits against corrosive um, 
weapons, then you're getting kind of no benefits from it whatsoever. So now you've kind of got this thing that can deal damage to one armor type, but not the other armor type because you really don't have the stripping to it. I'm just kind of not super fun. It's cubes are really what makes this weapon interesting. Um, and I love that mechanic because you get the explosions from it and I could hear all of the mirages in the background. Have you tried this with me? Have you tried this with me? Have you tried this? And it's probably one of the reasons why it's so fucking low on my list because I could hear all of the mirages saying in the background, explode the cubes with me, explode the cubes with me. I hate you. However, um, that is really where this uh, weapon shines. It's really interesting because it's got those blast procs that come out with the explosions in addition. So it knocks down enemies. Great for crowd control. Deals a good chunk of damage against non-armored targets. So that's kind of the big plus there. If you're fighting the um, the infested or you're fighting the corpus, uh, this is going to do pretty well. And it's got a really long range. So I believe innately it's got like a 50 meter range on a beam. And that's pretty much the longest beam um, that that is currently out there. So if you like beam weapons, try this one out, but it's not like a must have on my list. So last and definitely least on our Barrow available weapons is the Volcar Wraith. This one is available for 450 Ducats and 300,000 credits. Um, now, first and foremost, so just, just so that you guys know, I have always hated the Volcar. I will always hate the Volcar. There is nothing, I, it's just like, it's built into me to hate this weapon. Um, I'm a big fan of the Vectus Prime when it comes to snipers, the Rubico, and even to a lesser degree, and I know you guys are gonna cringe, um, and to a lesser degree, the, what is the Chargey Up one? You know what I'm talking about, the one that charges with all of the crit damage in the world, and you use it with Mag, and it's amazing. Uh, but the Volcar Wraith for me, untintable, just, ugh, I just, I don't like it. I just am not a big fan. It doesn't, it doesn't do as much killing as I would like it to do. I, I don't know. I, I am completely biased and you can take that as you like. Um, however, snipers are already not the most popular weapon category out there. I'm not saying that snipers are useless. I'm just saying they're not as popular as some of the other weapon categories and it's ugly and I hated the original version. So that's pretty much where that stops. There are other prettier sniper weapons to pick from. Um, I have nothing else to say about this because I just am so, I'm just so, my, my heart is like, is just puking. I don't know if a heart can puke, but it is currently puking, and that's how it feels, so bye bye Volcar Wraith. Switching gears to secondary, we have something a little bit different. As you can see, I'm highlighting the Axie A2 Relic, and this one is actually exclusively available from Barrow Katir. This one, I believe, is 50 Ducats and 45,000 credits. Um, now, this is a strange one to put out there, but this is your only access to the Aclex Prime link, and the Aclex Prime blueprint. So you're definitely gonna have to pick up more than one of these. Well, it depends. It depends on what your luck is like. I'm just putting that out there into the universe, but this is your only way to get the Aclex Prime um, components. So I would almost suggest maybe if you've got nothing else that you want to buy to pick up a couple of these and um, start farming the Aclex Prime blueprint and Aclex Prime link because RNGs is involved and you know that sometimes when RNGs is involved, there are some people who just don't want to play that. So farming up these parts might actually get you access to some people who are willing to pay you some plat. So look, I'm giving you some plat farming tips at the exact same time. Now, as for the Aclex Prime itself, oh, this is one of the weapons that I absolutely love as a secondary. There are tons of secondary weapons to love, but this kind of falls in line with the Vacor Marilock, the Pandero, any of those kind of um, semi-automatics that really pack a good punch and still have some status to boot so it's not the fastest whittler downer out there but if you land those headshots these things are absolute beasts i cannot recommend this more as you can see i have seven formal on this thing i love it it's a baby definitely um pick up the relics for this and as much as frustrating as it can be do, do your best to keep your calm, to keep your cool, get your farm on for this one, because this is definitely one of the weapons that is super, super, super worth it. The next one up on our list is technically the only secondary that Barrow actually sells, which I find really, really interesting because the last one was basically a relic set. This is the only one that you can actually like get from him directly. Um, and the Mara Detron is available for 500 Ducats and 200,000 credits. Now, I do 
have to be completely honest with you, I am a little bit biased. I have loved the Detron for ages. This has been just one of my favorite weapons for years and years. There is no damage fall off on its pellets. So if you put kind of like a seeker mod on there or like a punch through mod with like Rivens or something, this thing will pass through enemies and you'll get full damage for the full length of its extension. I, I love this weapon. It's base radiation, which is kind of weird, but then you can always pull off the radiation corrosive combo, which is very, very interesting because now you have a weapon against um, both types of armor, which is great up against the Grenier, and you guys know that we gotta take on some billies, right? Um, it's got a decent status chance, it's not fantastic, so you're really not gonna get the procs off of it, but when you do, you do, and it's kind of nice. I really, listen, it's a good weapon, it's not the greatest weapon, I just really like it. I'm allowed to like things and not have to say that I, you know, give actual feedback. I just like, it's in my heart and soul, you guys, okay? I can't help it. Now, as you can see, we have swapped up our Billy Killers because now we're going to be taking on melee weapons, and we are starting with the top of the pops for this one, which is the Prisma Dual Cleavers. Now, honestly, I absolutely hate, like, the model to this, but there are several other um, skins that you can toss on top to make it a little bit more bearable to look at. Right now, for me, it looks a little bit like a cheesy hot rod for somebody who has like a midlife crisis or something along those lines. I'm like, no, can't do it. Regardless, this thing is an absolute beast. It has shifted over its primary damage type more into slashing. I'm like, okay. And then they gave us extra status chance. I'm like, okay. And then we've got the high crit chance as is. I'm like, okay. So we could go ahead and like condition overload this baby. We can uh, blood rush this thing. It's just an absolute beast. There, I mean, there's no, there's, there's, uh, my, my whole body is singing when we talk about this weapon, except for the way that it looks, okay? <laughs> so this is definitely a must have. If you haven't been able to pick it up, grab this. Grab this quick and you will absolutely love it. You're gonna be rubbing your face in this. You're gonna be like, blah, blah, blah. it's so good. <laughs> Shifting gears, we've got our hands on the Prova Vandal, and this one is available for 410 Ducats and 250,000 credits. Now, honestly, I covered this a little bit earlier this year with the new Machete Stance and whatnot, and this is actually in the top three machetes currently available in-game. And I'm gonna be honest with you, this thing is a motherfucking beast, especially with the new stance and everything that makes machetes so much more usable. Oh, I absolutely love it. As you know, it has a base um, electric damage, which is fantastic, and it's got its um, status chance boosted up. So, when you have something that has a base uh, damage type, and it's just like one damage type, and then you've also got a good amount of status on top of that, that means you are going to get consistent status application. In this case, you can toss on corrosive and know that all of your procs are going to be corrosive procs, which makes this excellent against armored targets. I absolutely love it. There is also a shock skin that is available for it in the market, which is like, um, I think like, it's just some plat. I don't even know how much plat it is, but if you don't like the Vandal look, because clearly they have not like, you know, let us tweak its look yet and just, putting that out there into the universe, DE. <laughs> but um, if you don't like its current look, you can pick up that skin to kind of offset it. However, this is definitely one of my must-haves for Barrow Katir. Moving along, we've got the Prisma Obex. Now, this one is available for 500 Ducats and 175,000 credits. Now, this thing is actually pretty gosh darn fantastic, and I know that there's gonna be a little bit of pushback between this weapon and the next weapon that we've got on the list because they're pretty gosh darn close, um, but the Prisma Obex is super super fast flying fists if you like punching and kicking things very very quickly this is gonna be the weapon for you and because of the fact that it's got a boost to its status chance this thing pairs really really well with condition overload you definitely want to use this on this weapon um and the one thing that kind of pushes it above the uh next weapon on our list is the fact that if you guys don't know sparring attacks um, their charge attacks actually open enemies up to finishers, and uh, the finishers deal a shit ton of damage, and they bypass armor, and you're just putting that out there in the universe, and at the same time, this finisher that they particularly have puts them down on the ground, so you get ground finishers on top of that, and the Obex also has a mod, which I cannot remember off the top of my head, 
but basically any ground finishers that happen and you kill an enemy with the ground finisher it's gonna do AoE damage to a portion of their health you know how it goes you probably have seen it in a different video of mine I don't have it in this specific build but you know I'm just saying it's an option if you want to do it that way because you got the finisher you, you punch him in the face they're on the ground then you punch him in the ground then boom explosion because you kill everything around it or you deal damage to everything around it in a scaling way <laughs> <laughs> so that I get excited about this weapon. I really really like it. Definitely check this one out So next one up and arguably better than the Prisma Obex is the Machete Wraith This one is available for 410 Ducats and 250,000 credits um, Now I'm gonna say I like the Prisma Obex a little bit better than this one because it's a little bit more fun But if we're talking about hits to kill um, the Machete Wraith definitely beats out the Prisma Obex I'm just putting that down into the universe that enjoyment did take the reins on this one. However, much like the Probe of Vandal, this one got a nice improvement with the new stance, and it just feels good. I'm not going to say that it's the best one on the block, but it definitely gets the job done. You're definitely going to see some use in this all the way up into your sorties, but beyond that, it's probably not going to scale as well as the um, Prova Vandal, and that's mainly because of the fact that its supplemental stats aren't quite there. But, for a majority of things, it's not going to be absolutely terrible. It can still kill a 150 Bombard uh, pretty gosh darn quick. So, I definitely suggest checking this one out too. There's a lot of really good weapons on this side of the list, man. So, I feel like I'm going to get completely shed on for this next weapon. But, honestly, the Prisma Skana has really not impressed me all that much. This one is available for 510 Ducats and 175,000 credits. Um, now, I'm going to be honest you. I looked at this with rose colored glasses. I was really excited to kind of get my hands on it and I was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. I haven't used this weapon in such a long time. I definitely gotta try it out. And then I used it and I was like, hmm, yeah, I don't, I, I thought it was better than this. <laughs> now, if I'm gonna be completely blunt with you, one of the things that I do kind of want to put out there into the universe is it's got really strong crit statistics. So anything that is unarmored, this thing is going to do quite well in. It's almost kind of like the Quanta Vandal and the Prisma Gorgon of uh, Barrowketeer's weapons. It's great against unarmored units, which would be uh, the Corpus or the Infested. So fantastic for those. However, it is going to struggle against um, armored targets. It just doesn't have the status chance to really kind of push it forward. I haven't, l listen, I haven't tried Weeping Wounds with like a slash build on this to really kind of push that slash out there but even then it still was not doing it i tried i tried to love this weapon and really kind of say "Ooh, we could make this happen this could be a thing no i don't love it that much if i'm gonna be completely frank with you however the skana is an iconic sword so maybe you just want to pick it up for your collection to kind of add to that there are several skins that you can toss on top of it which is very very exciting however i do feel like its use is a little bit more limited than some of the other weapons so definitely keep Keep that in mind this isn't necessarily going to be the first weapon that I would gravitate towards when it comes to purchasing things for Ducats but if you're looking to kind of like push your mastery rank to the max uh, definitely pick this one up otherwise if you're a little bit struggling for the Ducat life and all of them credits are just too much for you to handle um you can definitely pass on this one so you know, take it or leave it, it's a classic, do what you will with it, but just, you know, don't get angry at me, I'm just telling you how it is, okay? Oh, by the way, because I know somebody's gonna point this out, you also have access to the Bright Purity mod from New Loka, which means that you will get the Corrosive AoE and Heal proc that comes from it, and a 100 base... 100% uh, increase to your base damage, which is nice, and yes, I use that in the builds, um, but it just, it still, no, it it just did it. But I mean, like I said, Corrosive is, a, uh, is great against Infested, so I mean, maybe you can use this as your Infested killer. Hmm? Alright, so that about does it for the Buyer's Guide and the full rundown to everything that Barrow Katir has in his stock. I hope that helped you guys. Um, as you guys know, Tenocon is fast approaching so start farming those ducats start farming that credits do everything that you got to do to kind of get your business in order if you are a digital um pass holder if you haven't already checked it out go to warframe.com backslash tenocon i don't know it might be tenocon 2017 it's something along those lines if you haven't picked up your digital pass already definitely go ahead and do that and you will have access to all of these weapons as well as all of the accessories which we'll be covering in a future date as well as all of the mods 
months that I may or may not cover in a future date. We'll see. Like, just, just get everything. That's my, that is genuinely, I know that sounds like so ridiculous and so like over the top. You don't need everything. Um, but the hoarder part of me always says it's best to be ready because you never know when that one mod or that one armor piece is going to be absolutely necessary for, for your life. I'm so dramatic. <laughs> I'm gonna stop being extra right now. So I'm gonna leave you guys. And as always, love somebody, heart nobody, and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Hold on one quick second. I totally forgot about this one. And don't lie, y'all probably forgot about it too. The Prisma Veritux is available for 550 ducats as well as 150,000 credits. Um, pick it up because it kills shit. Like, the rest of them do? I'm gonna be honest with you, all of the Arcwing melees are pretty much- they- they do the job? I'm gonna be just- like, that's as straightforward as it can be. They all do the job, so just, I mean, get it if you want it for Mastery Rank. It's not a must-have, but it exists, and you can put a pretty skin on it. So, um, yeah, I guess that about does it. You guys take care. Bye bye